is up YouTube Janky Yu-Gi-Oh here my name is Michael and today we have something very exciting it's been so long but Konami has finally done it they've made another reptile deck and it looks like it's gonna be good with snake rain <laughs> if you've ever played uh back in the day there's a card co that's on the ban list uh, that's called painful choice where you look at the top five or you look at you take any five cards from your deck you get one to your hand and then the rest go down go to the grave so it's like foolish burial on steroids foolish burial is at one painful choice is at is banned uh that grass looks greener i believe is also banned uh in the tcg i might be wrong about that it had it's been a while. Um, or it might be at one now. Either way, it's not... Like, no one plays it anymore. Snake Rain sends four reptiles. You get to choose four reptiles from your deck to send to the graveyard. So the card is fundamentally broken at the cost of discarding cards. You get five... Up to five monsters in your graveyard. And Konami has not printed a reptile deck so far to really take advantage of it. There's worms, I guess, and then there's the Venom, but which was what Snake's brain was supposed to be used for the Venom deck, but nobody cares. Those decks weren't good. But we have a deck called Abyss, and I read a few of them, just kind of skimmed through it to see what they do, and they have graveyard effects. So, first one. Null Dreg of the Abyss, Light Reptile Effect Monster, Zero Attack, Zero Defense. Uh, its first and second name are hard once per turn. You can send this card from your hand to the graveyard. Send one reptile monster, Dark Reptile Monster from your deck to your hand. Uh, so it itself is a foolish burial. Then if you control no monsters or you control an Abyss uh, monster, you can special summon this card from your graveyard but banish it when it leaves the field that you cannot special summon uh monsters while this special summoned by this effect is in the monster zone except for reptiles so it has a graveyard effect it puts itself in the graveyard by sending it from your hand to foolish burial it puts other things in the graveyard this is a light and dark deck it has everything almost going for it just off of this so I'm not saying this deck is gonna be broken it might not be and if it's not then oh well but just from this card alone my first impression is this and snake rain and all the support the reptiles have well reptiles don't have a ton of support but they have a they have Snake Rain and then possibly what's going to happen with this. They have a way to search it with King with an Xyz. So they have a lot of things going for them. And I'll talk about that more later. While, but we're going to get more into the archetype. So next up is the hill Drag of the Abyss. Uh, it's first... And second, our hard ones returns. You can send this card from your hand to the graveyard and send a light one. So it foolish burials a light reptile. If this is a normal special summon, you can add one abyss spell or trap card from your deck. Always good to tutor. Uh, a card. Yes, it gets Ash Blossom, but eh, who cares? <laughs> you, you can play around Ash Blossom. We're used to it at that point. Uh, at this point. Decent stats. Uh, zero attack kind of sucks because you have to normal it, but you can always special summon it to get the effect, and then also you can Xyz with it. So there's there's ways around it. It doesn't. Its stats are pretty uh, negligible. See though the defense though for any casual players that play like Caveman Yu-Gi-Oh, where they set monsters and pass and play a few back row and play like uh, you know the whole set of monsters set to back row pass and then your opponent and then your friends do the same thing so that's 2000 defense for you get for you casual players as well 
Uh, next up is Flogey Haze of the Abyss. Light reptile effect with 1800 uh, attack, 1400 defense. It's first and second are hard ones returned. If this card is sent from the field to the graveyard or a special summon from the graveyard, you can target one face up monster your opponent controls and one monster in their graveyard with an attack equal or higher. Uh, special summon the target from the opponent's graveyard to their field, and if you do, you send the target they control to the graveyard. So, uh, you give them a monster with higher attack to get rid of a problem card and everything. So if they have a good, like, monster and everything that, you know, is messing you up, you can send that to summon a, like, a, a higher attack monster, which doesn't necessarily mean the monster is better, but... Also, it doesn't destroy. It sends, so that's uh, important. Uh, if this card is in your graveyard, you can send one card from your hand to the graveyard. Add this back. Okay. It's fine. Uh, it adds back. All these cards want to be in the graveyard, as we've seen. Uh, Zoa, Haze of the Abyss. Dark Reptile Effect Monster. 1500 attack, 1700 defense. Uh, this card's first and second effects are hard ones per turn. If this card is sent from the field to the graveyard or special summon from the graveyard, you can have your opponent draw one card and if you if they do, add one abyss monster from your deck to your hand except for itself, then each player sends one card from their hand to the graveyard. So you give them a card, you search a card to search a card, and then you both send one. Okay. I'm not mad at that. You're not giving them any card advantage except for them setting up their graveyard but if you who knows you might be able to uh you know lock them out depending on uh what other support we get anyway so maybe their graveyard doesn't matter uh and then it has if this card's in your graveyard you can send a card from your graveyard to your hand add it back so the hazes add back the uh dregs uh set up the graveyard Next up is Curse at Dawn of the Abyss, which is a level 8 reptile effect monster. So one of the bigger ones. Uh, also, something I want to point out is the little ones are level 4. And rank 4s are still probably like the best XEs. So generic support, keep that in mind. Uh, light reptile effect, 400 attack, 2400 defense. Uh, you can use this card's first and second effect uh, once per turn. If this card is in your graveyard, you can tribute one monster. Special summon this card. Then your opponent can special summon one monster from their graveyard to the field, but its effects are negated. If this card is special summoned, you can target one level 4 lower abyss monster in your graveyard, special summon it, but banish it when it leaves the field. So they get a monster back. But its effects are negated. That's fine, as long as um, you maybe you know you're going second. You already like broke their board, and then either you're pushing for OTK, or maybe they didn't have like an impressive board and everything in the first place uh, for whatever reason. So you know you're pushing for game, and them give and giving them a monster maybe doesn't you know affect what you're doing. It's alright, plus it's a trade-in target. So this deck can play trade-in. It plays Foolish. It's going to play Snake Rain, obviously. Um, it's half light, half dark. So you can play some Chaos support if you wanted. I'm just trying to think that, like... Depending on how many darks there are, if there's, like... For the look of it, there's going to be... Four different dark so up to 12 so you could technically play a lure of darkness as well for drawing cards maybe more uh, dark so uh, I left dusk of the abyss dark reptile effect level 8 2000 attack 800 defense uh, it's first and second effects are hard once per turn if it's in your graveyard you can tribute a monster to special summit then your opponent can add one monster from their graveyard to their hand Okay, uh, if this card is special summon, you can target up to two of your banished monsters, including at least one reptile, and return them to the graveyard. Yeah, okay, um, 
I think I like this one actually a little bit less than the other one. It's because the other one may give them the monster, but the monster is, uh, its effects are negated, and there's a high chance that you could, like, get rid of the monster that you get them back anyway. Uh, with, while you're, you know, comboing off and doing your plays and your all your things. So, them getting a monster back onto the field might not be, uh, that big a deal since, like I said, its effects are negated, but um, but them getting one back to the hand it actually can make a difference because depending on what the other ones do uh, while you're going, if you give them a monster back to the hand uh, the issue becomes they can maybe Ash Blossom if they hadn't you know, used an Ash Blossom this turn you know, maybe you guys are playing such a slugfest and it's kind of dragging out and it becomes a battle of attrition this helps you lose that so that so that's keep that in mind if you're in like a really grindy thing this card isn't a good thing to do because it's going to cause you to lose card advantage uh i mean and this one gives them card advantage too but like i said it you can probably just attack over uh, that monster because none of these uh, stop your battle phase so you can keep so you can probably attack so Aaron King of the Abyss light reptile effect 2500 attack 2800 defense its first second and third effects are once per turn each and uh, this card is in your graveyard you contribute two monsters to special summon this card uh, if the if your opponent adds cards to their hand except during the draw phase, you can send one random card from their hand to the graveyard. If a monster or monsters your opponent control is sent to the graveyard by a card effect, you can add one light or dark reptile from your deck to the hand except for itself. This card is overall just really, really good. Um, it's another like thing you can just throw in the graveyard with your snake rain, your trade-in, and then it comes back and it does a lot of disruption. Also, the whole adding cards to hand, uh, these give them card effect, or these, uh, a lot of the other cards as we read, uh, give them cards. So in the, if you have this out and then you summon this while this is out, then you can, uh, then this, you send the card, a random card as well. And then a random card was sent if it's a monster, happens to be sent and everything, uh, then you get add as well because this doesn't save from the field to the graveyard. It says sent by a card effect. So when you make them like uh, send a random card from their hand uh, to the graveyard with its second effect, the third effect might trigger if it's a monster. So this card synergizes really well with the rest of the archetype, and in general, just uh, it also synergizes with itself. I'm really impressed with this deck. I I don't know if it'll be good. It looks really strong. It definitely seems like it has potential. And I'm looking forward to trying it. But the thing is, is like, just because I like it doesn't mean it's going to do anything. So next we got uh, Amunisa, Queen of the Abyss. Dark Reptile Effect. 2700 attack, 2100 defense. Uh, you can use this card's first, second, and third effects per turn. First effect, if it's in your graveyard, tribute two monsters to special summon it. Third effect, if your opponent special summons a monster, uh, if monsters are special summon from your graveyard, they send a one card they control to the graveyard. If a monster or monsters is sent from your opponent's hand or deck to the graveyard, you can special summon a light or dark reptile monster from your graveyard except for itself. This is definitely the best uh, level 8, in my opinion, because it summons more, so you can keep like going and play extending, so that's pretty exciting. Uh, we're not much to say about this one, other than I just, I like all these cards. I haven't really found one that I'm like, eh, on, you know? Uh, and maybe that's just me being excited to finally have a deck to play Snake Rain in. <laughs> I wanted a deck that's actually somewhat decent to play that in. So, next up is... Oh, gosh, I'm going to butcher this name. Forgive me. 
Ogdu Ogdo Abyss? Uh, yeah, Ogdo Abyss, Deity of the Abyss. Light Reptile Effect. It's uh, first and second effect are hard ones for turn to each. If this card is in your graveyard, you can tribute three monsters special summon this once. While it's face up quick effect, you can send all monsters on the field except for face up monsters that were special summoned from the graveyard. So, since this deck summons everything back from the graveyard, um, this doesn't affect yours, but it affects your opponent. But it can affect your opponents. So that's pretty wild. And it's only once while it's on the field. It's a level 10, which is kind of... Eh. But uh, none of these monsters have really any downsides. Other than how many you have to tribute. Like how many monsters you have to tribute. So... This is... Oh, man, I... I'm gonna have to do a video on this, like, or try and playing it. If you guys want to send me any, like, gameplay of this, please do, because I'm pretty sure you guys will be able to come up with something better than I will. Uh, so, but, and I would love to see what all of you come up with, but I'm definitely gonna try this. And yeah, the next up is their field spell, Depths of the Abyss. So, its first and second effects are hard ones to turn. If a face-up reptile monster you control is destroyed by battle or an opponent's card effect, you can target one card your opponent controls, send it to the graveyard. A little bit of protection. They destroy something you send. If this card in your field spell or your field zone is destroyed by an opponent's card effect, you can send the cards from the top of your uh, opponent's deck. To the graveyard equal to the number of reptiles with different names in your graveyard. Uh, the second effect, I'm maybe I'm not a big fan of the second effect. Um, maybe that's just me. Emptiness of the Abyss is their continuous trap card. Uh, so, first effect is a hard one's turn. During the main phase, you can tribute. One reptile monster, then target one monster your opponent in your opponent's graveyard. Special summon it to your field, but send it to the uh, graveyard during the end phase. Okay, so that's what it's meant to synergize with the field spell. I got it. <clears throat> if this face-up card in your spell trap card zone is sent to the graveyard, send all non or face-up non reptile monsters you control to the graveyard. Okay, it, it, that's the quote-unquote downside for it. Next up is Invasion of the Abyss. So, you special summon two tokens. If you have eight or more Abyss monsters with different names in your graveyard, you can apply this effect instead. Special summon two reptiles with different names from your graveyard. Yeah, I'm playing this uh, in my build of the deck. I'm going to try this card. Uh, it summons the two tokens. Uh, you can use those to link summon and link climb. You can uh, you can you probably do a lot of things with this. And then if you have eight or more, so if you have like all of them, basically, uh, you can just go ahead and dump or special summon two from your graveyard. So it's like uh, Gotham's emergency call. The it's a God's emergency call uh, is what I'm comparing it to, which is a trap card that I believe said uh, they special summon two X sabers from your graveyard, and you might have needed to have a synchro, or uh, I that might I don't remember if you need to synchro or not. I think you did uh, X saber synchro, but if you didn't, then uh, maybe I'm misremembering. Either way. That is it for today. If it is your birthday today, happy birthday. If you want to send me any cool deck profiles or replays, especially of this deck, I would love to see them. Please do. Uh, tell me what you think of this deck. Do you think it's going to be any good? Because I, I certainly do, as this whole thing I uh, was talking about. I was talking about how reptiles have okay support here and there, 
But the fact that this deck is uh, the chaos attribute, so light and dark, is also really huge. So if you wanted to, you could... Uh, a fun build might be... I don't know, it probably won't be good, but a fun build could be like playing Chaos Emperor Dragon and BLS in the deck because Snake Rain will set you up for that. And uh, sure, there you want to be able to play all the cards and everything since there are uh, restrictions on some of the spell and trap cards and like one of the monsters that summon themselves himself back. But uh, the thing is, is that like light and dark have probably the most support in the game for the attributes so keep that in mind is this deck has the capability of basically having its own painful choice having double monster reborn in the fact of the trap card which if you have if you open up with snake rain that uh, the second effect of having eight or more isn't really that uh, hard to have I don't think it's not like too insane of a play to really think about then like reptiles have a way to search as well because they have the uh, king of the feral imps which is an xyz that's two level four monsters you can detach to add a reptile um for more rank four builds i don't like the card personally uh because i hate having any form of bricks uh but uh, Kage to Kage is a reptile that was played with King of the Feral Imps and could be played with this deck as it is a dark reptile. So it has synergy in the deck. And the more darks you put in the deck means the more likely you can do with Allure and all that. So, yeah. Anyway, I've rambled on long enough and I hope. I hope all of you who stuck around to the end of this video have a wonderful day.